First things first, got to get that Intenso brewed up. It's going to be a long day of Lego building. Right on. It's finally starting to snow outside, so in my opinion, that is a good thing. I've got my little pile of sets here that I want to build today. One's already built, the Piranha Plant. Oh man, that thing was so cool. I'll show you that later on in this video, but it is just a magnificent build. And then uh, I've got some battle packs. I want to start building some of the figures from these here. But yeah, this thing is crazy. I guess I'll show it to you right now. It's got these like wild slopes. You see those? I think those are new. Yeah, nice print pieces up top here. Like look at his mouth. <laughs> his giant lips and his teeth and his tongue in there. Whew, this thing is so cool. And just the pot. The way that this was constructed was actually insane. There are so many brackets inside and it's just surrounded by those curved slopes to give it that authentic shape. Plus look at the leaves. I love that. Look at all the parts that were used to create the shape of those leaves. Ah, just an all around great build. And the funny thing is, is he's just sitting there loosely. You can just pull it out like that and you can sort of have a look inside the pot. You can see some coins. And those can be released by pushing back here, and they'll just come shooting out the bottom. And these coins are print pieces. Yes! I just realized that obviously I had the piranha plant's tongue in the wrong position. It should be in the bottom of its mouth. That's pretty obvious. That's where my tongue is, and that's where it is as well. It actually has some uh, ball joints in there, so this can actually pitch at different angles. And then his head can rotate. That's what happened as I was playing around with it and his head rotated like that. Then his tongue ended up on the top of his mouth. But yeah, that can just rotate because it's on a ball joint. It's super heavy. And these are really nice print pieces up top here. There's two different varieties of them. I've been wanting to get this set for quite some time. I didn't rush to the Lego store on like new issue day because I didn't think it would be hard to find. But apparently that wasn't the case. It was hard to find and when I was at the Lego store the other day. I finally managed to grab one, so that's good. Now I've got to decide where we're going to put this thing. With the other Mario stuff, is there going to be space? I hope. I hope. I hope. Uh, yeah, oh, probably right there. Get out of the way, Toad. <laughs> but that is a really cool Toad. It was done by Build Better Bricks, I think, on Rebrickable.com. Yeah, really good model. I think he has a bunch of different characters. Could be wrong, but I think he was in Lego Masters Season 1, like the gentleman that created that. I think he was one of the finalists. I could be wrong. That's just going off the top of my head. But there we go. We've got the Piranha Plant placed beside Bowser and the Pac-Man Arcade. I love the look of this shelf now. And I also love the look of the one next to it. Specifically, the Disney sets with Wally, -E, and then all of these like little miniature ones. Yeah, that's looking clean. All right, what are we going to build next? Whoa, I just backed into a cabinet. That was almost scary. Now that I've got my delicious coffee and I've got the piranha plant built, I should probably eat breakfast, but I don't know if we got time for that today. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Uh, but I'm thinking I should work on this castle. So I've been reading a lot of comments in regards to the castle. And there's been some uh, feedback in regards to it. So some people don't like the fact that it's symmetrical. When I built it, I had symmetry in mind and I sort of wanted to build it symmetrical. But some people are saying that maybe the back tower should be taller or one tower should be larger or there should be like a big tower in the back that is the king's keep. I like that idea. Uh, but there, a lot of people are saying that there needs to be something that makes it not symmetrical. And for some reason, I'm like a symmetrical person. <laughs> that sounded funny, but I, I just like symmetry. But I do agree that we need to try and do some different things with this castle. Before we continue with today's LEGO vlog, I wanted to let you know about my next WhatNot live stream. It's taking place on Sunday, January 14th at 12 p.m. Mountain Time. During that stream, I'm going to be auctioning off a bunch of LEGO minifigures, and my Buy It Now store will be loaded. In addition to that, I'm also going to be giving away some cool LEGO minifigures, the CMF Series 25. I've got 12 of them lined up for giveaways. Also, the Walt Disney Tribute Camera. 
giveaways are free to enter. If you're not on Whatnot, you can join using my affiliate link, which is in the pinned comment and description below. And when you join using that link, you're gonna get a $15 credit, which can be redeemed on your first purchase. Whatnot is one of the largest online platforms that collectors like you and I can use to buy and sell collectibles. Also, we can host some pretty cool giveaways. I hope to see you there. I've been chipping away on the build here and I think that you all were right. I don't think symmetry is the way to go for Lego castles. I haven't built very many custom Lego castles. I've done a few rebrickable models and then that other one that I based off a uh, set. But this thing is looking pretty sweet now. Well, I think it was looking pretty sweet before, but it's looking even better now. Ah, the next thing I want to work on is the King's Keep, and I think I'm actually going to build that right below the blacksmith, which is this removable section. So that's my next thing, but I want to show you what I've got done so far, because I think the improvements that have been made are quite positive. We can always reference the original design because the original design featured pretty much four of the same towers. There were uh, different locations for the arrow slots, but that's about it. Like these ones have four on the front and I didn't have enough pieces to put four on the back, etc. So over here, this is the first modified tower. And what I decided to do was build this off the side of this section. That's not removable. That's just built right into the wall there. I built it using some inverted slopes on the bottom of two by eight plate. And then you can see the parts that were used to create that. I also switched out this removable panel or switched it up and I gave it sort of like a bar look there. I think that was pretty cool. It was pretty solid before it was just like these. It was still removable, but it was solid. So I decided to switch it out with that. And I also uh, changed out the one by two, sorry, probably focusing on my hand, the one by two plate that was on the top and I made it a one by eight. So then you can just grab that whole rail that sort of shelters that like window lookout. And then there's these right here. So I referenced the uh, original design somewhat. It uses the same colors with the uh, brown arches and then the uh, brackets with the modified two by two tiles with the two studs and then the one by two ingot tiles. And then that is placed on a plate and a tile goes in front of that plate. So I think that is a pretty cool addition and that's actually brand new. Like that's why this tower is now taller than the front. And then I decided to put this large roof on top and that covers that entire tower. So yeah, that was the first one that I made the changes to. And then I swooped over here and made some more changes. So now the towers are different from one another. Uh, this one actually has two of those windows same design, both removable, so you can actually access the interior details. And then I built this little like lookout here, so it's not very tall. I really like that. People can stand on watch, this sort of lookout, maybe shoot a few arrows. And I built that using the same pillars on the side, the cylinders, the one by one bricks. And then I actually built these little like half walls, like pony walls, I guess I'll call them. And those are pretty neat because they're built using brackets they're inset one stud and then I put uh, jumpers on the face of the brackets and that's why you can see there's a half stud right there in that tile there and I put these like pointy things I thought those looked pretty cool this had like a nice decoration to the building and then you can come to the top here where I just added another one of those roofs so this change has actually took quite a bit of time just sort of fiddling around with that because in order to modify it you sort of have to like pull it apart one flaw maybe is the fact that I didn't make all of this modular so for example I didn't run jumpers on the plate so that I can actually remove this in different sections it would just consume like so many jumpers and so many tiles it would actually be crazy because I'd have to do it one two three times four five six seven times seven, 14, 20, you know what I mean? It'd be like, like a crazy amount of pieces, like absolutely insane. One other thing that I decided to do was add this into the wall. And this is a removable panel. So that inverted slope and slope matches up with the inverted slope and slope there. And there's one of those one by four modified plates with the two studs. So that just sort of holds in spot there and it can pop out. So I just think that's a cool way to tell some stories once I actually get uh, 
to the point where I'm actually adding minifigures and details to the interior. But you can see I removed that back panel there because I want to start working on the King's Keep. And I think rather than centering the King's Keep in the center of the build, like my original plan, I'm actually going to have it uh, built into this panel and be right up against that wall, just because that's going to conserve space in the front when you actually walk in the castle. And there's not really a point of having the walkway behind the King's Keep. So I think that's the next thing I'm going to do. However, I should probably build another set. I did decide to take a little break, head upstairs and build this while hanging out with my kids. It is the Tales of the Space Age. The 48th Lego Ideas set comes with four different space vignettes. Pretty cool. Vignettes or I guess postcards, whatever you want to call them. Pretty cool. You can hang them on the wall if you so choose. They have some great part usage. Like look at the wands there there's the roller skate right down there these big like dish elements i love these print pieces right there that make up the big dipper and they each or each one represents a different postcard from space it's funny because they come with five instruction manuals one for each of the little vignettes and then this one here just shows you how to like connect them but you have cool cosmic travelers focusing on like comets then intergalactic road trips. That's the name of that one there. And then out of this world, it's probably my favorite one just because I like the Big Dipper and the little rocket. I think that's pretty neat. And then into the unknown. So you can display them like this in sort of like a semicircle. It's how I like it. Or you can connect them as well. Just like that. Now I'm not sure where I'm gonna put this in the Lego room. Originally I thought I was gonna put it up with my other space sets and maybe that astronaut but that's pretty high up on the shelf and you won't be able to admire them. So maybe they need to go somewhere among my other shelving, like down low on the billies or maybe somewhere by my desk. Or what I could do is hang them all because they have hangers on the back. You could hang them as one large unit like that. I'd imagine a command strip could do the job or I could just put a little hook in the wall somewhere. I guess I got to decide. But yeah, it's cool to take a break from castle building and build. Tales of the Space Age. I do think the Tales of the Space Age would be a great backdrop for this astronaut set. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm not gonna have enough time to build the astronaut today because I'm prioritizing the castle. It's just taking a little bit longer than expected because I wanna make it look epic. That's the goal. However, I did manage to build all of these clones. So I busted open all of those battle packs built all the figures and did not build the mini builds. Pretty standard for me. I usually just get those for the figures because look at all those droids and all those troopers. That's awesome. But yeah, unfortunately, no astronaut today. Now I've started working on the King's Keep and I want this to be like modular, just like the towers. It's got to be removable. So what I did was frame the wall in there. You see that odd looking structure? But yeah, I want that to be removable. So when I take these towers out, I'll be able to just grab the King's Keep and sort of bring it out. It is flimsy right now because there's only like one or two layers of walls and I have this wall in the way. But if I were to move this out of the way, I'll be able to bring this out and show you the start. So you've got the back wall that is going to support the blacksmith, the build like that, just like it was prior to making the uh, start of the King's Keep walls. And then I've got the door there. I'm gonna put some masonry bricks behind these arches just to conceal it and also get like the two tone where it's like light gray and dark gray. And then this door will swing open and you can go into the King's Keep, probably do like an elevated platform back here for them. Put the king's chair there, maybe like a dining table or something. Yeah, I think this is a great start. A ton of masonry bricks and ton of modified 1x2 bricks are going to go into it, but it's going to look sweet when it's done. It's crazy to think how many parts this project is taking. Keep in mind that this is not done yet, nor is the castle, but this is my first crack at the Black Vulcan Knights King's Keep. Got the entrance right there, which is framed nicely with the arches above the door is the Black Falcon Knight shield, and that's nicely framed with some masonry bricks and some slopes. There are some windows on either side. Now, I know a keep shouldn't really have windows. 
I tested it without windows and it just looked like a masonry wall. It was sort of boring. So for the sake of adding color and just detail, I decided to add those windows and also the flags above. It's got a roof here that is going to be like a lookout. And you'll see when I actually connect the other parts of the castle, they connect with that. So it's pretty cool. It's got the masonry wall going around that roof there. Uh, it's got some 1x4 modified plates with the two studs so I can add some of those cheese slopes to have nice color with the light and dark gray. There are some windows on the side. This does look rather flat here, but you're not going to be able to see that because it's going to be hidden amongst the other castle walls. And of course, it's the same on this side. It's definitely a pretty interesting shape. And then once again, we've got the blacksmith on the uh, top there. No interior details yet, unfortunately. It's just one of the things that I haven't got around to doing yet. I do feel a little bit of creator burnout going here today. I've been building for quite some time. For some reason, this has taken me pretty much the entire day. Uh, but yeah, in the inside, I mounted some shields and also some weapons. As you can see those. This is technically removable as well. I didn't put the jumpers on that because you're going to be able to see the interior details anyway. There's more weapons on this side here, spears and also swords. And there's some flags mounted on the back wall there. Ooh, I forgot about the flag there. That's my bad. There's supposed to be a flag there, just like there is on this side and on this side here. Uh, what I did was actually just use those axle hole pieces and then I stuck bars through the axles, like the, the axle holes, and then I was able to mount flags. And if the bar is stuck right through, then you can put a flag on either side, or you can just have the flag coming off the wall a little bit. So I thought that was a pretty cool technique. And I used those same axle holes to mount the weapons as well. And I just really think that worked out quite nicely. And here's the base. I've removed everything. So you can see all the different parts of the castle. Whoops, I'm still zoomed in. You can see all the different parts of the castle there. And here's the base where you can see all of the jumpers and studs that are going to hold all these different modular sections in place. Section number one is the front entrance with the drawbridge. Some people have been telling me that the drawbridge is far too big and I could easily reduce the width of it just by increasing the size of the dark gray masonry on either side of the arches and then moving the arches closer together. You can see there's a one by four plate there. So I could easily reduce the width of it by up to four studs. Uh, but I was sort of thinking maybe like there's carts or ox carts or something coming into the castle and that does accommodate that or horses, etc. So yeah, that's sort of my thought process, but maybe it would look better if that drawbridge was a little bit smaller. That would be a very easy modification to make. We got tower left front, tower right front, our left, our right. Then we have sidewall number one, sidewall number two, tower back left, the keep and blacksmith and tower right back. I think the easiest way to put this thing back together would be to start with the keep, which I think is actually missing a little bit of a sidewall there, just right here. One by four studs. I have it on the other side, but not on this side. It must have fallen off and I must have put it away when I was sorting pieces. But then we're going to do back tower left our left <laughs> and that should just slide in place there sorry the camera's probably focusing on my hands not the actual castle then we're going to do back tower right and that should place down there but the goal is to come through here and add a bunch of details like in these areas on the side of the keep i think that's where we can put like the market and everything and then i'm probably going to do Sidewall, these trees might be in the way a little bit. Oh, sidewall right, which should connect to the top of the keep and also to that tower. And then the other sidewall, like that. And then I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the center. Drawbridge, this is actually my first time completely deconstructing it and reconstructing it with you here today. So I think things are going pretty smoothly considering I'm actually on camera. Woohoo, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> so then the center. Now this tower right is 
a tricky one because it has to reconnect to the Technic axle for the drawbridge. So I got to like slide it in and push it down. And then the tricky part is realigning the axle, but apparently not because I just did it first try. So that will reel in the chains, which is good. And then uh, this tower, just like that. And finally the drawbridge, which is a little bit of a hassle, but not really. Just got to clip it onto these Technic pieces, make sure our chains are aligned, and then connect the chains to the end of the drawbridge. And the odds of that working, I'm going to say 50%. <laughs> Let's see if it'll work. <laughs> Come on, drawbridge. You can do it. Come on. 50% odds of it working. Oh, there we go. Oh. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> there we go, everybody. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the changes that I was able to make to the castle today. Uh, my future plans are to add more details, like minifigures everywhere. Hopefully the market, the king's interior details of the king's keep as well. His chair, his dining room table, his feast, etc. I think uh, it's coming along great, and I was really happy with the changes that I was able to make to this mock over the last couple of days beauty woo so everybody there we go we've got quite the variety today started with the piranha plant then a little bit of castle building and then the tales of the space age and back to more castle building hey i appreciate all the comments below with these critiques and suggestions it it is really helpful thank you so much at first i thought symmetry but now i'm really liking the outcome of this castle I think the King's Keep looks pretty good, and I can't wait to add some more details to that. And also the modifications I was able to make to these towers, I think, turned out quite nicely as well. And this is a pretty cool ongoing project. I'm having a lot of fun with this custom medieval castle that I'm building using six sets. And I love this piranha plant. It is fantastic. Everybody, thank you so much for coming on by. Hopefully I see you at that stream that I mentioned earlier in this video. Please remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff coming out in the near future. And farewell.